need much of an excuse to go for a ride and, uh, and when it's something to do with uh, depression and suicide prevention uh, we're on the bikes and uh, we're there. For answers, what can, how can we help suicide prevention? That's what we're trying to ask everybody. How do we go about it? Otherwise, I'm no, nobody. And they just seem to be what there's five in my family in the last couple of years. All the love. extremely proud of Stephen. Um, just absolutely miraculous what he's done and uh, the lives that he's affected. longer that horrible stigma that you don't talk about suicide. You just let people talk about the things that are on their mind and sooner or later if you build enough trust uh, some of the worries and the concerns and the risk factors come out. I'm Jane Moritz. I'm actually a farmer from Hyden in the Eastern Wheat Belt but for a number of years since 2011 I've also worked under the One Life Suicide Prevention Strategy and one of the parts of my job was working with Wheat Belt Aboriginal, so the Noongar people across the region from Albany to Geraldton. But uh, for this particular project uh, it is called Bikes and Yarns. This is where you sit around in a circle or have some good food and you just yarn and it's what we call a safe yarn. But it's more about creating the environment and the event that will get the Noongar men and boys along. And that's where the Black Dog Bike Riders came into it. And we started the Bikes and Yarns. I rang Steve Andrews, who I've known and applauded for a long time for his good work in suicide awareness and men's health. And um, I said, look, 
I've talked to some Noongar men in Northern and they said the best way I could get the mob along for a yarn session about suicide, because it's not a good topic, you know, it's a horrible word, suicide, uh, but the best way we could get them along is if you could get us a few motorbikes. Do you reckon you know anyone with some motorbikes? Well, did I know someone with motorbikes? And Steve said, we have been looking for an opportunity to connect with Indigenous people. Jane, this is just, the timing is perfect. So Steve, in his own time, has organised about 20 bike riders to come. And uh, I rang at the elders in each town of York, Northam, Kelleberran and Querading. Elders who I already knew and who respected me because we've worked together and built trust up over the last three or four years. And it's been a fabulous privilege for me to be part of doing that. You're protected in this land today that we stand on. Noongar country, Balladong, I'm a Balladong boy, Balladong tribal ground here. The river people, we are the river people. A lot of Aboriginal people didn't start here or in the desert. They were coastal people. We're always in that fertile area where there's fish and game. And then we got moved out to these areas and those guys got moved further on. My tribe refused to move. We wanted to camp here because we liked it here. And we're still here. So I'm happy with that. Um, speaking on issues that are concerning our people, yes, mental issues is a big thing. It all, all comes inside with drug and alcohol, which you guys also being here helps. We know that. So thank you for being here today with us. Thank you. Our observation is that there's a lot of suicide amongst the young Indigenous boys. Is that something that you're aware of in the community here? It's not a thing that was talked about in our, in our community, our race. It was, it was a shameful thing and it's not to talk to anybody about it. It was my problem that to sort it out. So I'm hoping um, you guys may have some ideas or something may pop up in your mind that, it, that it's happened to you somewhere down the track and you'd like to tell us about it. We're here to start the conversation, that's what we want to do. We believe that the way to, or part of the way to solving the problem of depression, of this um, uh, shame that's attached to suicide that you mentioned, uh, is to talk about it. We, we ride around on our motorbikes getting people to talk about it. That's why we're here today. And we hope that we, by us coming here, that we can start the conversation amongst your people that will lead them to getting help and then hopefully stop the people in despair, taking their own life. That's what we try to do. Welcome, Uruch Buddha. Buddha is our country, Buddha is our country, and we're Baladong people. It's a lot of problems with mental health with Aboriginal people. I lost one son, but I didn't lose one son, I lost two sons. One still incarcerated, 10 years. I've got to go to Warraloo, pick him up every time. And I'm 79 years of age. Mental health has failed him. I was in Darwin when it happened, over 10 years ago. I wasn't here, but my sisters tried everything to do with the hospital, the police. Mental health, they rang Northern. No one would come, it was a Friday afternoon. So, you know, more should be done. Talk about it is good, because I had went through a lot. Welcome. Two cousins um, came to me right before they took their lives. They lost their mothers, and um, they felt that um, they, their heart was broken and they had nothing to live for. And um, they didn't think about their life and their, their children you know, and, and their life. Um, uh, next morning, when, when, I, when I woke up, one of my cousins came to me. He went to Perth and he took his life um, at 7 o'clock that morning. 
And another cousin, he came with me and my dad, and spent a bit of time with us here. And he went to Perth and he took his life the next morning, or that night. Well, me, myself, I thought of, I could have prevented something like to help me, but then I thought to myself, I can't sort of blame myself because, you know, this, it was their choice, and um, at the time I didn't really understand what I was sort of going through, you know? We have been feeling that guilt. <coughs> yeah, and um, we still do. I had, um, we still do feel it. But we can't get any help in Tullamere. For them. Most of the time we just sit down and watch him. Our eldest cousin, he, he um, we actually took him up to the cemetery, got the cemetery with him and uh, clean, clean his mum's grave and he just, he was just lay on the grave and just, just lay there, you know, for just, just lay and, and cry and cry and cry and, and um, to get that call that um, he took his life was, was a real, real um, thing for me because I really thought to myself, you know, um, you know, I, I could have prevented that from happening. We're trying to look for answers. What can, how can we help suicide prevention? That's what we're trying to ask everybody. I think, I think how the biggest, are we going about it? Biggest healing. You know? I, feel, I feel that talking about it is, is um, there's a lot of healing there about what, uh, how we can deal with it. Because I think the only way we can deal with it is to talk about it as, as a group. We'd like to see somebody that was could be based or something in Kilimanjaro to. to Make sure they check those kids every every you know every now and then. Otherwise, we'll have no nobody. Because they just seem to be what there's five in my family in the last couple of years. I've um, lost the love of my life through suicide. Uh, Ruth was on medication for the depression, and what I found at one stage was we didn't ask the pharmacist what this new medication would do with her antidepressants. The new medication she was prescribed by her doctor counteracted her antidepressants and, uh, yeah, committed suicide. Please, if you've got anyone that is even hints about suicide, just watch them. Talk, don't you talk to them, you listen to them. You don't tell them, pull your socks up. That's the worst thing anyone can be told if they've got depression. You have to um, just be there for them, know that they're loved, and um, get, their, get support for them. But they have to be open to you and for you not to be critical of them at all. If they want to stay in bed all day, let them. And you just go in every now and then and just say, do you want to talk? Just be there for them. Now, there's something else that can help. And we think it's music. And Uncle Tom lost his guitar because it got wrecked. So these guys have made a really kind gesture. They've all put their hands in their pockets. And we have for you, Uncle Tom, something bloody beautiful. I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you very, very much for your time and, and this gift. Thank you. There's a lot of the uh, comments stated there today. There is no, no help here. You don't know what to do. Yeah? Well, they, they tend to think it's the easy way out, but it's a thing that affects the whole community. It's getting worse. With, along with the uh, drug and alcohol, they just tend to go to the extremes where they want to in their lives because nothing's going according to their plan. You know? My son touched on a, a few things there this afternoon but, which was devastating in terms of not knowing what to do, you know, blame yourself for what happened. But it's not nobody's fault. I tend to put my experiences on paper, you know, and tell people of my experience actual experience. That particular song that I sang first one, that was an experience of being taken away the stolen generation. And my brother and I were taken along with one of our brothers died and he, he was with us also. And two sisters. And to this place it was worse than the Gestapo camp. 
Now that's sign of mass book. It's hard to comprehend, you know, some a kid getting put in jail for nothing. How could they put a kid in jail? They were supposed to be there to look after us, you know. You lost a big big part of your life in terms of culture wise. It was sad, really sad. I wouldn't wish that on anybody, you know. Suicide is sort of um, had a big impact on, on the family in particular. But once again the kids have to pay, you know. But I haven't got a, um, a happy song, really. I just play them as they, they want them. This is getting things out that grab people's attention. So yeah, motorcycles are something that puts us out there. I've had depression all of my life, so working in that area is something that is sort of close to my heart. When I'm hungry, you're my from I'm extremely proud of Stephen. Um, Just absolutely miraculous what he's done and uh, the lives that he's affected. So I flew into Ellis for the first ride and there was this big guy there and he came up to me and he was a giant of a man and he said to me, you're a lucky man to have a friend like Stephen. And he said, had I not met him on his ride around Australia, I wouldn't be here. And it just meant so much, you know, one life that was saved. You still be everything. I have worked with some um, Indigenous Australians and made a huge impact on me. And uh, as a result of that, uh, when this opportunity came up, I grabbed it with both hands. And uh, the way that um, we interacted with the Aboriginal communities yesterday just uh, says it all. To our children and to me. These people haven't got a chance, I don't believe. They've, you know, they're, we talk about the stolen generation. Well, this is another version of that. These kids aren't getting a chance. And except their parents and their grandparents are the ones that are being left behind. In life's ocean, but most of all, you're my best friend. If we can help people to understand that you can talk about it without there being any social impact, that it's fine to be able to say, yeah, I'm feeling down and I don't see any future. In the process of talking about it, you can usually find your own answers, but while it's going around and around in your head, there's no answers. It just makes it a whole lot worse. When you're in a steel cage, you're not able to interact with the wider environment that you're travelling through. And it's an absolutely magic feeling that I'm there in the middle of nowhere and having a ball. Most of all, you're my best friend. Anna tried to commit suicide four months before she did and uh, I, I, you know, I didn't know anything about it and I was trying to find out about these sort of things and one thing that sticks in my mind is that one of the medicos sort of said if they do it once I'll try it again. Saturday morning Anna and I were making love and Sunday afternoon I was in the morgue identifying her. It just killed me. Killed me. 
I mean, since Anna died, there's been a thousand times I've wanted to die. But there's never been once that I wanted to kill myself. So I don't know what these people go through. We, we haven't got the resources or the, or the horsepower to, to, to get into the communities, but we'll just continue doing the best we can to alert people to the, the shortfalls of the systems and the, and the lack of local community help. Black Dog Ride was born through my personal losses to suicide, the loss of my mother and uh, a dear friend. and a, an overwhelming need to feel like I needed to fix it. I needed to, to do something, I needed to make a difference, to get people talking about something that um, a lot of people don't like to talk about. I got on the bike uh, July 26, 2009 on my own and uh, the journey began. And 26 days later, that ride was finished. But Black Dog Ride had just begun. It's a community. It's a community of people who like riding motorbikes and uh, who, like me, want to make a difference, want to be involved in the solution. As I keep saying to the community, if, if we make a difference to one person, every life is precious and it's going to take a whole community to make a difference. Well, we saw with the black dog group that's a community they are going to make a difference it's no longer just you can fix it or they can fix it or the government should fix it we need to do this all together and every avenue that we use is going to help i just believe there are ways that we can help people if you get them at the right time that emotional first aid you know like stopping the bleeding that emotional first aid is just so critical we're right on the edge of of life for these people People say you only need to save one life to make a difference and um, Black Dog Riders, a community Australia wide has done that. If we made a little bit of difference to the lives of the people that we met today, we'll keep riding, we'll keep doing it. I'm only 61, I've got plenty of years of riding left. My dad was riding just the other day with me, he's 83. I'll still be riding at 83 if I think I need to. Never attempt to me Your comrades on the street Some of them will never learn It's a simple thing I've always got a smile in your face Anytime and any place When they ask me how I just smile and say You've got to kiss and play a good morning Good morning.